is another sellout here at the WVU Coliseum, fitting for a top 10 matchup. We welcome you to Big Monday, presented by Joseph A. Bank. You know what time it is. Game time. Let's get it. Woo! You want to win the Big 12? You got to go through these big two. They are knocking the bottom out of it. Rock Chalk Jayhawk is blowing in off the flames, y'all. But you know who's always ready? Press Virginia. That's so. Kansas, West Virginia, blockbuster time, y'all. Welcome to an ESPN Sonic blockbuster. It's going to be fun tonight. It is number 10 Kansas on the road here in Morgantown to take on number six, West Virginia. Two top 10 teams, just another night in the Big 12 because the top four in the league, all in the top 10, and all tied for the conference league. Five games in. Bob Oshusen here with Jay Billis. Holly Rowe will join us in just a moment. Is this finally the year where one of those other teams unseats Kansas? Is it going to be West Virginia? And how far will tonight go in telling that story? Well, last question first. This is a huge game in telling that story. If you want to keep pace with the leaders in this league and win the league, you have to protect your home court and win at home. If you want to separate yourself, you have to win on the road. And to win on the road here at West Virginia, it's not about X's and O's. You have to make plays under duress, and you will be under duress for 40 minutes against this Mountaineer defense. Well, as we take a look at tonight's lineups, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, two of the top six scorers in the Big 12, play for Bill Self, led by Devontae Graham, averaging about 18 and a half points a game. Svi Mikhailuk at 16 and a half points a game. But, Jay, they're going up against the best defensive team in the Big 12, led, of course, by Javon Carter. Well, Javon Carter may be the best individual perimeter defender in the country. He's got great hands and strong hands. But the key for this West Virginia team is to take away the three-point attack of Kansas. Do not let Kansas shoot it from the spot at which they catch it. Make them put it on the floor. It's time to tip off a sonic blockbuster here at WVU Coliseum. Kansas starts the game out in man-to-man. -man. Both teams can switch a lot of screens. Expect this West Virginia team to post, to look to get the ball inside. Instead, Miles tries a three and gets them out. Here's off to a good start. Look how tough it is just to get the ball inbounds. And a five count. West Virginia strikes early. Bob, job one is just getting the ball in bounds. West Virginia makes the normally simple thing incredibly difficult. Key number one, inbound the ball. When you do, catch, face the defense, and attack. Don't catch and dribble, catch and face. And then all five Jayhawks had better rebound because this is an excellent offensive rebounding team, West Virginia, especially with Issa Ahmad back in the lineup. That really helps their rebounding a great deal. Nice toss in by Mikhailuk to Spring Graham. Blocked by Kanate. Sagaba Kanate does not get the credit he deserves for being the great rim protector that he is. We talk about Mo Bamba of Texas, and rightfully so. But Kanate is right there with Bamba as far as protecting that rim and being quick off the floor. Carter for three. Way short. Makai Luke, a lane to the basket, and it's rejected again by Sag Kanata. Sagaba Kanate did not have a single block shot in the loss at Texas Tech after having seven against Baylor and five against Oklahoma. But he has set the tone in this game. You're not going to the rim without a challenge. Another turnover on the inbound attempt. Miles for three. Offensive rebound, West. Timeout, Kansas. Back in 30 seconds.
looked a lot happier when he came out in the Bob Huggins casual pullover. <laughs> And those two met at midcourt to start, but he was not happy watching this. Well, Kansas has been punched in the mouth from the beginning of this game, and Bill Self has to be very disappointed. His team couldn't even get the ball inbounds after they gave up the first basket. And he's trying to tell his team, you need to toughen up in this environment. Otherwise, you know, there's never been a shutout in college basketball that I know of, but if they play the way they did, there could be one. And Kansas certainly won't do that but that was, this has not been the kind of start you want when you come on the road in a really difficult environment against an outstanding team. With Gerald Vick checking in for the first time after not starting for the first time this season. Now let's see if Kansas can get a shot here. There's a catch and shoot, which they did not want to give up, and you don't want to ever come off a corner shooter, Bob. And Vick is able to bury it. Yeah, one of the tenants of Bob Huggins defenses do not let the offensive player shoot the ball from the catch spot make him put it on the ground West for three long rebound to Devontae Graham and numbers for Kansas Mikhailu goes right at Carter and Lamont West that was not a bad shot but it wasn't the best shot and that gave Kansas an opportunity to get out and run. Now maybe they feel a little bit better about themselves. Now it's Azabuki guarding the goal. Holly? Well, as you mentioned, there was a new starting lineup for Kansas tonight with Gerald Vick not starting because of uh, coach's decision. I'm told he's trying to send a little message to him. But early on with only two players in that starting lineup who's actually played here in this building in this hectic West Virginia team. He immediately called timeout, got Vic back in there. He needed a more experienced ball hander and someone who was going to actually not show fear at this West Virginia crowd and press early on. I guess you want to send the message. At the same time, there is a price maybe for sending the message. And now LeGerald Vic is on the floor. Devontae Graham poked in the eye by Carter. Devon Carter guarding Devontae Graham, and that's a great matchup between two players that deserve mention for na the National Player of the Year race, in my judgment. And especially in Big 12 play, both of them have been outstanding. And no one, with the exception of maybe Trey Young at Oklahoma, has been better in Big 12 play than Devontae Graham. He's been outstanding in every regard. Is there a way to put Javon Carter in some type of perspective, how good he is defensively compared to others maybe you have seen as Newman comes up short? Well, I think he may be the best perimeter defender in the country, and certainly as a one-on-one -on -one defender, great hands. He leads the, leads the conference in steals, one of the best steals guys in the country. I would put Mikel Bridges up there of, uh, of Villanova. Yep. But Carter, he, he's a grown man out there. I'm not sure there's, there's any guard that has better defensive hands in the country than Javon Carter. A little surprised West Virginia hasn't looked to get the ball inside more against this smaller Kansas team. Shot clock at three. Way outside. That three is off the mark for Wesley Harris. And good job by Azubuki to keep Kanate off the offensive glass. So far for West Virginia, it's been mostly jump shots. And that's not their strength. Azubuki being shoved away from the basket by Kanate. Now he comes and sets the screen. Rolls to the goal, and it's off his shins out of bounds. Well, not the best of passes thrown right at the feet of Yudoka Azubuki. But Azubuki can't get into a wrestling match. He's got to go against the pressure and just spin off it. He allowed himself to get pushed way off the lane, and Kansas couldn't get into anything offensively. Kanate goes to the bench, Lamont West sits down, and Issa Ahmad, who was out the first semester because of academic ineligibility, came back and scored 18 in his first game this season. Against Texas Tech is in. There's an offensive rebound for Carter. Well, that one just shot off the rim. And another jump shot off of one pass. Machi Bender in for West Virginia as well. Doubling the post, then recovering. A good job by Mikhailuk to stay in front of Daxter Miles. Harris. Way short. Bender there to clean it up. Bender. 
Azubuki came over to try to block that shot, and that opened up the offensive glass for Bender. Might have been better just to make him take the tough two. Makai Lucas foul. Off to a good start here at WVU Coliseum. And talk about a fashion statement made by the Mountaineers. This was media day. Holly Rowe with more when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. And in part by the magic of Walt Disney World Resort Hotel. Just behind the outfits today. Well, you know, last year I felt like we came a little, a little too basic. You know, a regular West Virginia polo, slacks, brown shoes. You know, we wanted to spice it up a little bit this year. Okay, so walk me through. What do we got here? All right, so we got the West Virginia bow tie going on. We do got a West Virginia sh shirt on too that you can't even the see. The logo? It. Where the logo at? It's somewhere here. Right by your heart yeah, where it should be. Right there. Nice. And we got the blue vest going on. You know how we do it. Then when you flip the shirt, you know you got to get the colors in there. That, that do go well. Tell me about the shoes. Oh, you know, um, just the finest West Virginia Mountaineer shoes right here. You know. Shout out to our tailor. These are pretty sweet outfits. You walk in a room, you know these going to stand out. You yeah. Know, you got no choice but to see those. Definitely. This is what we call Press Virginia. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. So inspired by the players and Coach Huggins, you know, when you come to Morgantown, you have to come dressed very specially. We can see Bill Self did that tonight with his own pullover windbreaker homage to Coach Huggins, but we've got a little something special as well. As soon as we get a dead bottle, I'll show you what we've got in store. <laughs> I think maybe if the folks were looking at the left side of the screen, they got a sneak preview. Well, coming out of the timeout, I don't know if West Virginia was mesmerized by our fancy clothing, but Kansas was able to run some offense and did a great job of getting the ball into you don't a boogie for a, an easy two, which is certainly not easy to get against this team. Okay. I want to see Holly's gear. With the classic old gold and blue bow tie for Coach Huggs. The vest that he wore, ours are not quite as bright. And the shoes. you got to get the shoes. This is, whether it's uh, fine-looking Phil here in Morgantown or Tony the Taylor in Charleston, we are looking fine here. you got to wear what you wear in Mountaineer country. When in Rome. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be giving the specials. <laughs> Miles and, and asked for a table for four by any moment. Devontae Graham gives it up. Oh. Azabuki finishes, stares at Machi Bender, and then gets called for a technical foul. And Bill Self wants to go out and have a word with Doug Sermons at the other end and plead the case on behalf of his center. Yeah, a little. Just a tremendous job by Devontae Graham to attack the basket and then a fantastic stuff by Yudoka Azubuki. That's two hands over Bender. And I think a little oversensitivity on the part of the refereeing crew, but you know, just trying to trying to keep everybody's emotions in check. But it's an emotional game. I don't I don't agree with that technical foul, but they are the law of the court, so you gotta live with it. But at least you see a, a Kansas team that is now fighting back. The problem is that counts as a that counts as a personal foul against Azubuki. What do you think Bill Self is telling Azubuki there? Go dunk on him again. I and think stare it's exactly down again, what he's telling. or just not, don't not, stare no, down. Not again. to stare down, but don't let this take any of your aggressiveness away. That's why he put his hand over his mouth. He wouldn't put his hand over his mouth to say. Hey, uh, you know, don't do that again. Beetle Bolden in the game for the first time for West Virginia, and he can fill it up from deep. Carter from the corner. Got it! Talk about an emotional leader. And that's a great defensive play by Javon Carter. Knocks down the three, gets the turnover, because he never stops playing. Javon Carter averaging over three and a half steals per game, number one among all major conference players, and those aren't the only turnovers he causes. 
he's not a low maintenance player. He's a no maintenance player. And a guy who's totally really changed the culture or set the culture, I should say, of this entire team. He's always in the gym, and as a result, his teammates are always in there with him. Kanate after the offensive rebound. Well, Kansas becomes much thinner up front with Mitch Lightfoot in the game. He can block shots. He's a terrific athlete. But he doesn't have the, the size of Yudoka Azubuki, and that's a, a big difference. Offensive foul on Malik Newman. Well, how about Bolden moving his feet? This is impressive defensively. James Beadle Bolden moving his feet. He doesn't have to stay right in front of the ball handler, but as long as you've got two feet on the floor, you can move to maintain that position. That was a great defensive play by Bolden. There really is a culture here. Isn't there for Bob Huggins? There is a buy-in all the way through the roster on how they have to play. Yeah, I don't know if it's a buy-in or if it's complete fear. Like, you're going <laughs> to you're gonna do it because you're afraid of Bob. But he, he's one of the great coaches in the game. I, obviously, everybody knows Bill Self's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I don't think it's going to be much longer before Bob Huggins joins him there. But one of the great defensive minds in the game. Vic. Yes. LeGerald Vic. His second jumper that goes down. Now you can't pop X and O your way out of plan against West Virginia. You're going to have to make plays under duress. And they're plays you just can't, you, know, you can't diagram them. You're going to have to assess things under stress and make a play. And you've got to catch it ready to shoot and ready to drive. Carter with five to shoot over Mikhailu. Knocks wow. it down. Vic turns it over. Taken back by Graham. Here's Mikhailu. He tries to throw it down and is met by Kanate again. Wow. And it's out of bounds off Kansas. Canate won't be afraid of Bob Huggins on this trip to the bench as Huggins is in our infinity coach's corner. Only two active coaches have more wins right now than Bob Huggins, and that's Mike Krzyzewski and Jim Beheim. Take an infinity timeout in your day to vote for your favorite coach and charity. This early lead has been fueled by great defense by West Virginia. Javon Carter forcing the turnover. James Bolden, the great defense move in his feet. And then the rim protection of Sagaba Kanate blocking three shots in this game. And how about this rim protection? Bring it to dunk. It's going right back at you. And the truth is, Bob, West Virginia should be up by more. Their defense has been spectacular, but the Mountaineers' offense has not been anywhere near as good as it can be just one assist thus far because it's been primarily jump shots for the Mountaineers let's see how Kansas responds now after the timeout well, Kansas has done a good job defensively Holden in and out for three and here comes Devontae Graham shovels one ahead to Vic he crosses over gets tripped up and that foul will be on Javon Carter. That is his second. Well, Javon Carter got into foul trouble at Texas Tech. There were a lot of different fouls, uh, guys in foul trouble at Texas Tech. They changed the foul to Beetle Bolden. So that changes things as Carter gets a foul taken away. That's only the first on Bolden. Makai Luke with a height advantage on Bolden. Garrett has to be ready to shoot when he catches the ball. Azabuki out of the double team. Garrett will drive it. Makai Luke from the corner. He knocks down a three. And a foul is called, I believe, after the basket went through. So count the goal. But it's a foul. 
on Azubuki. That's his second. And that's where that technical foul really hurts a player like Azubuki. Behind Kanate, a little bit frustrated, took him and just threw him down. But Bill Self talking to him, like, you can't do that. That's just a, that's a wasted foul right there. I'm a little surprised that West Virginia's coming off corner shooters and allowing as many catch and shoots as they have earlier in this game. We'd rather have Kansas take a tough two than come off a corner shooter. Kanate needs some help. And now it's a scramble for the ball that he wins. Eight to shoot. Lamont West. Travel. Our Saturday primetime game presented by AT&T tips off at 8.15 Eastern. Florida is at Rupp to take on number 18, Kentucky. And then UCLA will meet Oregon in Eugene. Both of those games on ESPN and the ESPN app on Saturday night. You'll be at Rupp. Get a look at, K at Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky an improving team. They keep getting better. And Florida one of the most fun teams to watch just because of how solid they are on the offensive end. And Bill Self is right now wiping his brow and putting his hand in his head in his hands because he can't believe how loose his team is with the ball that's turnover number eight for the Jayhawks early in this game well guys we just saw Wesley Harris for West Virginia check into this ball game there was a question today whether or not he would be eligible to play tonight after an incident with fans when Texas Tech students rushed the court Bob Huggins said they investigated thoroughly the Big 12 conference that uh, has reprimanded him but he will not be suspended but he did just get a nice basket there it's, it's really almost hard to believe how the Big 12 reprimanded Wesley Harris for that. I mean, if look, I'm all for sportsmanship, and I'm not I'm not advocating that anything should happen. But to me, you know, it, it's pretty clear for fans. Players stay out of the stands when Marcus Smart of Oklahoma State went into the stands of Texas Tech. That caused a huge problem, and fans need to stay off the court. And if you do go on the court, because one thing we don't know is what was said to the West Virginia players and how fans may have come at them. And I think you have to protect the players first. And I don't agree with any reprimand that was given by the Big 12. You think court stormings at times are too celebrated when they happen? And as a result, the fans want to be out on the floor no, at the no end question. of a game Look, like they're, that. They're glorified and, and they're actually invited. But there's a Big 12 rule against it. And the Big 12 needs to enforce the rule on the court storm, not against a player that should be protected. I mean, the players are the players are, are priority number one. I mean, they're the reason that everybody buys all these tickets and pays all this money for television and comes to see the players. And they need to be protected. That foul on Bolden, his second that puts Graham at the lock. Kansas with eight turnovers in the first 10 minutes. They only average about 12 turnovers a game. Well, that's why with all the turnovers, West Virginia should be up by more. And the Mountaineers need to run better offense to take advantage of the defense that's put them in such a good position. Issa Ahmad out of a double team. Deflected pass almost stolen by Graham. Instead it's Harris. No good for three and Vic up for the rebound. I mean, Kansas really has sent all five guys to the defensive glass, but it's been jump shot after jump shot for West Virginia. Makai Luke's finger roll won't go. Boy, Kanate is such a presence there, not only blocking shots, and he's so quick off the floor, but rebounding as well. He's an underrated player. Issa Ahmad turns it over. Now watch how difficult it is. Harris is going to be on the ball. How hard it is just to get the ball in bounds. Home run to Devontae Graham. Gives it up. And another block at the rim by Kanate. Second effort. That'll be goaltending. The crowd loves it. But score the bucket for Mitch Lightfoot. And I don't think Bob Huggins minds at all that he goaltended that shot. Almost like Patrick Ewing in the opening the moments same thing. of the 1982 championship game against North Carolina. Let them know you're there. I mean, that leaves a, that, even though it's a goaltend, that, can, that leaves a message. And maybe a little bit of a scar. But Kansas, as poorly as Kansas has dealt with pressure, and, and you can't sugarcoat it, Kansas has dealt with pressure poorly thus far in the game with all the turnovers. They're one bucket down. 
That was a great moment if memory serves in our 30 for 30 on the Requiem for the Big East. Right, John Thompson told Patrick Ewing, block everything. I don't care if it's a goaltend. I don't care what the call is. Send a message and just go swat everything. Well, it did send a message, and I think Bob Huggins is going to send a little message. That was not a good shot by Kanate. And he's done so many things well. A good outlet here. Mikhailuk defended the rim, but there's Dax Miles to follow up to Chase Harlemus. Great job by Miles not giving up on the play. Garrett. Watch how Kanate measures this. I mean, he was behind the rim and came over from the weak side and measured that with two hands. That looked like a volleyball block. That's twice he has come from behind the rim, just timing the block, saying, come on, try me. That was incredibly impressive. Five block shots, and it feels like ten. And I think Bob Huggins is probably talking to him about the jump shot on the other end, that he's playing so well on the glass and so hard and protecting the rim. What a big-time performance by Sagaba Kanate. Can Kansas get it in? They barely do. And that wears you out after a while, not just physically, but mentally. Marcus Garrett out of the double team. Newman finds Vic. Crowd wanted to travel. Vic can't hit the three. Mitch Lightfoot knocks it out. It's a little bit frenetic in that last possession for Kansas. And that due to the West Virginia pressure. They are physical. They talk and they are relentless and it is really hard to play against relentless for 40 minutes another three check that at two goes down for dax miles well that was not an easy shot both daxter miles and james bolden both have excellent step back moves Light foot. Misses. And the tip follow woke up. Kansas did everything right but finished the play. Carter. And that pass broken up by Vic. There's a timeout on the court. When Kansas has broken the pressure, and from time to time they have, it has been Sagaba Kanate that has protected the rim and erased any chance for an easy basket, big time. Yeah, Rabbi, this place has been lit up by Sac Canate and five blocked shots. West Virginia, as a result, with a 26 to 17 lead. Bob Schusen here with Jay Billis and Holly Rowe. It was a very brief rest for Canate. He's back in, and why not? And also in for the first time, the recently reinstated Silvio De Sosa. Billy Preston still ineligible, at least to this point, being held out by Kansas. So a more shorthanded team that Bill Self hoped he would have at this point in the season. And he could use that depth tonight, Jay, as you talked about, getting worn down by West Virginia. No question. And Kansas switching just about everything out on the floor right now. Carter, shot fake, fades away. The tip follow is there for Lamont West. Uh, Lamont West went right oh, over Silvio De Sosa, his first opportunity in this game and not able to get the block out. Graham. Long rebound. 
And it's, it's an 8-0 run right now for West Virginia looking to add to it. And it's really been one and out for Kansas. Canate, jump hook is pure. Bill Self wants a timeout. Well, Bob Hogan's going right after Sylvia DeSosa. After that little slice cut, West Virginia just gets the ball right in to Canate, who seals off and then gets to that left shoulder, which is what he wants to do every time. But DeSosa gives up an offensive rebound when he comes in and then gives up that bucket. And this is a difficult position to put a guy who was in high school just a, a couple months ago uh, to put him in this position. But Kansas needs his, he needs his minutes. And where are you going to go for answers depth-wise if you're Bill Self, if not there? Well, Self knew that he didn't have a lot of depth coming in here. It's a question of how the players who are in the game, how, how well and how hard they play. And really, it's been a function of not handling the pressure. It's more the, the fact they've gotten five of their shots blocked and they've turned the ball over eight times. I mean, in this game, West Virginia's got nine points off of turnovers th this early in the game, and they've got eight second-chance points. And Yudoka Azubuki picked up that technical foul after maybe his best play of the game where he dunked over Bender, picked up another foul just throwing Kanate to the ground, and he's going to have to spend time on the bench. Malik Newman still can't find a bucket for Kansas. And Kanate has dominated the paint on the defensive end, both blocking shots and rebounding. West. Three more! Here comes the run and jump. Can't pick it up there. Makai Luke with a great look to Vic. Kansas very fortunate to get a bucket out of that. Really good job passing out because that's the worst place to take it is to the sideline and to pick that up where you're, you're a stationary player. That ended a drought of over three and a half minutes without a point for KU. Carter steps back. Malik Newman the other way. He's got Mikhailuk with him. Euro crossover. Can't finish it. Gets his own miss. The tip follow third try is there for Malik Newman. Boy, Newman really quick off the floor on that third jump. And Bob, West Virginia needs to start adjusting to the fact that Kansas is switching all these exchanges. They need to start screening the switch and then slipping to the basket. West goes back door. Met by DeSosa. Seven on the shot clock for That's West Virginia. Final. And our next Wednesday doubleheader in the NBA has the Lakers squaring off against the Thunder at 8 Eastern. Then we'll head to Staples Center for the Nuggets and the Clippers. Our coverage tips with NBA countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app Wednesday night NBA doubleheader. How good has Kyle Kuzma been for oh. the Lakers? Easily the steal of the draft. Vick the rebound off the Javon Carter miss. Well, the Gerald Vick has done a nice job rebounding all season long. Really good guard rebounder. What can Bill Self do to get some shots for Devontae Graham? He's only got one point so far, and that pocket pass becomes a turnover. Well, you got to quit turning it over. But Javon Carter's done such a great job on him. Canate, this time through a double team. Reach in on Marcus Garrett. So free throws for Sad Canate when we come back to Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball.
Well, Superman, at least in this game so far, is at the line. And that's Sack Canate. As most of the highlight plays here in the first half have been Canate guarding the rim and getting some highlight reel rejections. Well, Kansas hasn't been able to really run any offense to speak of. Everything has been challenged. And Javon Carter has done a great job on Devontae Graham, not allowing him really to get anything. He's been playing off the ball, and Carter's not letting him, not letting him get anything. I mean, similar job to what he did against Trey Young, and Trey Young had to take a lot of bad shots in that game just to get shots up. Dick got loose on the baseline that time, and Devontae Graham found him. When you have a guy like Devontae Graham who's averaging 22 points per game in Big 12 play, he's been spectacular, shooting over... 41% from three, and the thing that Graham has done better than he did the rest of the year, in Big 12 play, he's averaging nine free throws a game. He shot more free throws in five Big 12 games than he did in the rest of the games combined. Five to shoot. Miles. Hold down by DeSosa. And to your point, it's not that Graham is shooting and missing. He's not shooting. He's got two field goal attempts in the first half so far. He's been trapped. He's just had some difficulty getting you know, getting anything open. He had one open shot earlier in the game. DeSosa. With the left hand. Well, that was a good, strong move by Silvio DeSosa. And he is one big, strong athlete. Give him some time, and he's going to be a really good player for Bill Self. Kansas coming with the double team. There's not a lot of movement right now for West Virginia. A lot of standing. Four to shoot. Ahmad off balance. Tough shot. Knocked down by Issa Ahmad. Ahmad gives them another player that can put points on the board. He can shoot it from deep. He can post. He's a really good player. Had 18 points, six rebounds against Texas Tech in his first game back. Kai Luke gives it up to Sosa. And it looks like he was fouled on the floor on a reach in by Dax Miles. We were talking about the addition of Issa Ahmad for this West Virginia team, Jay, and I asked him how he'd rate his first game back against Texas Tech with 18 points. He said, I was only about a six. He said, I was rushing, trying to do too much. He kind of feels like he was trying to make up for that whole first semester suspension in the first game. So he said tonight he was going to take his time, be a little bit more um, aggressive, but not hurry and then not try to make it up, take it as it came. Uh, Sosa is fouled on a reach-in by Canate. That's just the sixth team foul for West Virginia. So they played really good defense, all these blocked shots. And yet Kansas can't find its way to the free throw line. And only the first on Canate. Dax Miles, by the way, sat down. He's got two. Don't you hate it when the referees put the ball on the floor like that? Garrett. That's a brick. All the time we take the review plays and everything, and it can't take two seconds to let the team in by the ball. It's ridiculous. time when I, I've, I've watched every West Virginia game, either live or on tape. Pretty move by Canate. Now, Bob, that, that is an up and under move. A lot of people say when you double clutch and go from one side of the bucket to the other for a reverse layup, they call that up and under. That's an up and under move what Canate just made. Vic the floater worried about Canate at the rim, and now he dribbles it out of trouble, tries a three, and comes up short. That's when you know you're having an impact is when they give up a layup to take a, a jumper. Ahmad blocked by Vic, but that's a goal to Watch this fantastic move by Kanate. That's the up, that's a, a, an up and under move. That's what it means. 
What a fantastic move. Well, he has brought it in both ends. But what a fantastic performance in the first half by Sagaba Kanate. About a five second differential. Graham, straightaway three. One of the only open looks he's had. And that's his first field goal. Well, you never see West Virginia allow a player just to waltz into a jumper like that. I know Bob Huggins has to be upset with that, but that's one of the one of the few times in this first half that West Virginia wasn't fantastic on defense. Mikhailu, how good if it goes, just comes up short. And Kansas down by 13 at the break. And the story of the first half, Zach Kanate with eight points, six rebounds, and five blocks. Let's go to Holly. Well, Coach Huggins, your ball pressure is one thing, but how do you describe the impact Kanate has had at the rim on this game? Because he's done that all year. Uh, he's, he's a heck of a shot blocker. You've done a nice job on Devontae Graham, keeping him under check. What just happened, though, that he got loose for the three? No, we're supposed to hard hedge it, and we stood back and back here and didn't hard hedge. Who wore the windbreaker better so far, you or Bill Self? There isn't any question. You know it, too. <laughs> he is one of a kind. 41-28, Bob Huggins Mountaineers over Kansas at halftime. Time to head back to the studio with Seth and Jay standing by with the halftime report is Carl Ravage. Ravi? Did by Joseph A. Bank. The bank was closed. Sag Kanate, five block shots in the first half. Set the tone in a 13-point halftime lead for West Virginia over Kansas. This is on ESPN Sonic Blockbuster as we're just about set for the start of the second half. We'll see if KU can respond, but they find themselves trailing 41-28 to at the break. Bob Wachus in here with Jay Billis. Solly Rowe will join us in just a moment. They make their living in Morgantown with defense. Zach Kanate did it at the rim, but we also saw Javon Carter do what he does. Well, Javon Carter was outstanding in his defense all game long, especially in putting pressure on in the backcourt. The job that he did on Trey Young when they played Oklahoma was simply fantastic. He forced Trey Young into nine turnovers, and Young's going to score points, but they didn't let him make plays. And he's done basically the same thing in this game against Devontae Graham. In the first half, Graham played 20 minutes, never came out. He was one of three from the field. He had four points. He did have four assists against two turnovers, but the defense that Javon Carter played on Devontae Graham was a big factor. The other factor was Yudoka Azubuki got in foul trouble early. He got a technical foul, then he got another foul for throwing down Kanate on a, a rebound where he was behind him on an offensive rebound. And he, he only played five minutes in the first half and yet had four points, five rebounds, and a block. He's a presence in there and needs to stay on the floor because Kansas can get back in this if he does. We are set for the second half of this Sonic blockbuster. And let's see if Kansas can respond. Can they get Devontae Graham some looks? Malik Newman on Tuesday against Iowa State had a big game as well. Here's Mikhailuk with a step back three, and that rims out. Good shot fake by Mikhailu. Just having Azubuki back in the game is going to make, he's going to be a big target in there, and you've got to pay attention to him. That's going to open things up for his teammates. Kanate in double figures for the seventh time this season. No hesitation going to that left shoulder. West from the corner. Offensive rebound, Kanate, and draws a foul. And that's on Azabuki. So there's number three, Holly. Well, that's exactly not what Bill Self wanted to see. He just talked to his team before they took the floor and during this half, and he said, we need to be more aggressive. He's like, I want you guys to have fun, but I want it by being aggressive, going after your shots. We've already seen that. Two 
quick threes early in the shot clock. They were taking good shots. But he wants to also establish Udoka Azubuke down low, and that third foul is going to determine how passive or aggressive he can play on that low block. Well, anytime you face a team that is going to pressure you, you have to attack that pressure at the point it's applied. And that's two, almost two rebounds that Kanate grabbed over the top of Azubuki. And having, having not played for 15 minutes in that first half, that's a long time to sit out and try to establish any rhythm. You know, Bob, we talk about establishing rhythm on the offensive end. West Virginia establishes a defensive rhythm in the game. And it's been their West defensive Virginia rhythm throughout the, the course of this game thus far that's been the dominant force. First foul on Lamont West as he held up Devontae Graham. Here's the run and jump. Graham tied up. Vic for three. Oh, what a great defensive job by Javon Carter to stop that drive by Graham. West fumbled the entry pass from Miles. Let's take a look at tonight's sonic blockbuster between these two top ten schools. The 12th all-time meeting, Kansas leads 7-4. West Virginia, though, has won four in a row here in Morgantown. Mikhailu. They're having to make plays. There's really no offense that can be run right now. Kansas is just having to go off the dribble. And they're not running any of their stuff. Not running their four game, not calling plays. It's just hard to get the ball in bounds. Now a foul called on Wesley Harris. He tied up Mikhailu because he tried to cut to the corner. That's his first. Yeah, what West Virginia's pressure really makes you do it, it makes an opposing player think more about the pressure than they think about attacking the pressure and the pass that they want to make there's an open look for Graham now the question is can Kansas get some consecutive stops West Virginia running its five out motion right now Kanate. Double dribble. Turns it over. So maybe some momentum starting to swing back to KU. And their best way maybe to get back in the game. Their leading scorer gets some open looks. Well, just ran into his screen. Harris trying to chase Graham. And like Velcro, just running right into that screen. Graham floats one up towards the goal and draws a foul. Well, Devontae Graham's gotten off to a slow start tonight, and I know it's sad for him because his grandmother, Doris, has made the six-hour drive from Raleigh, North Carolina. She was one of the key figures in raising this young man, along with his mother that he's very close with. So he really wanted to put on a gr good show for Grandma Doris uh, because she has put in some serious effort. She's going to have to drive home in a snowstorm tomorrow to North Carolina. And she wants to see some more shots go up. Mikhailu, that's off the mark. Azabuki tried to keep it alive, but he knocked it out. That foul a moment ago was called on Javon Carter, his second. Let's take another look. The crowd saw it on the big board and reacted. Well, he had a hand in his back. He probably didn't push him, but there was a hand in his back. Maybe go into Kanate. He's got Azubuki on him. Why not try to pick up another foul? Shot clock down to five. Issa Ahmad. Yes. That's what Issa Ahmad brings. The ability to knock down a jumper. He can drive it and a versatile defender. Mikhailu lobs it up to Azabuki. Azabuki. Well, that was a really smart play. You know, Kanate is enjoying blocking shots. And once he comes over from the weak side, that opened up that little lob. That was, Kentucky does that all the time, and Kansas awfully good at it as well. Great adjustment by Bill Self. West. In and out. Azabuki the rebound. 
Kansas can get this down to 10, maybe 9. Yeah, West Virginia, just like Kansas, they can switch just about everything with the exception of Kanate inside. Kanate's going to pick up a foul. Sometimes your shot blocking can put you at a disadvantage. And instead of just getting back and making a stand in the lane two on one, you know, Kanate goes after that block and it opened up that lob. And if not, it would have opened up an offensive rebound with no chance to, to go after it. That foul was West Virginia's third and Kanate's second. Vic, wild pass along the baseline, knocked out. It will belong to KU when we come back. Second half, Sonic Blockbuster here in Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. All-time, Kansas leads the series against West Virginia 7-4, but, Jay, they have obviously struggled in Morgantown. They've lost four in a row. Well, Bill Self has brought some great teams into this building, but West Virginia protects its home court. Defense is outstanding. If you can get one here, if you can sneak out a win here in Morgantown, that might be worth two because very few teams are going to win here, if any. West Virginia is legit. They can beat absolutely anybody. I've been a little surprised they haven't been better on the offensive end. I, there's a, in the first half, I thought that West Virginia's lead should have been much bigger. I think the Mountaineers settled for a lot of jump shots. They might have to settle for one here. Shot clock winding down. Devontae Graham comes up just a little bit short. I'm Bob Wachusen here with Jay Billis and Holly Rowe. Big Monday in Morgantown. Can Kansas get this back to single digits and put a scare in the Mountaineers? Well, because of West Virginia's defense, though, Bob, the quality of shot that Kansas has gotten throughout the course of this game has been really low. Good hands by Newman, but Abazabuki couldn't grab the loose ball. And it's not been an idea. It's not been the idea, you know, you say shot selection all the time. Kansas can't select shots. They're being forced into shots. You've got to be, you know, Bill Self would say, and he is saying to his team, You've got to be stronger to get the shot you want. But West Virginia makes it awfully difficult to get the shot you want. Joe DeRosa rings up with Gerald Vick. That's his second. When you play against West Virginia, you had better be prepared to run through your cuts because they're going to run through theirs. Ahmad forces one up. Fouled, I think, on the floor by Devontae Graham. He got a switch, Graham on him, and he took advantage of it. Saturday primetime presented by AT&T. Tips off this weekend at 8.15 Eastern. Saturday night, Gators at Rupp to take on Kentucky. And then UCLA, Oregon in Eugene. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. UCLA coming off a loss. Colorado getting its first win ever in Pauley Pavilion. And Dana Altman has a grad transfer from New Mexico named Elijah Brown, who is a really good player. Who do you make Arizona State? Arizona State is uh, Bobby Hurley's done a great job great with that job. team. Offensively, they can score with anyone. The question is, can they get stops? Can they defend at a high level? Good slip to the basket, and Daxter Miles right there to pick up that slip by Yudoka Azubuki. Vic for three. Azubuki an offensive rebound. Newman tries a triple. Big shot for KU. And what a great play by Azubuki. Not only the offensive rebound, but have the presence of mind to look out for a step in three. Best time in basketball to shoot a three is after an offensive rebound. Because even as good as West Virginia is, once a shot goes up, you're not thinking about continuing to play defense. You're thinking about going on offense. Looks like a foul called away from the ball on the freshman Marcus Garrett. Holly? 
Well, guys, Kanate is checking back in this game. When they called that last time out, we saw him sit on the bench by himself for an extended period, talking to assistant coach Eric Martin. Eric coaches the big men, and they were having a great conversation of how he can be a little bit smarter and what he can do a little bit better. Kanate, I heard him say, he can't guard me. I think he's talking about Udoka. He just needs to be a little more efficient around the basket. He thought he was fouled there, no call. As Svi Mikhailuk back in the game for Kansas after a brief rest as well. Another goaltend. Strong move by Azabuke. Donate had five blocked shots in the first 12 minutes. He has not blocked a shot since. He has goaltended a couple of times. That was a terrific move by Azabuke. He's leading the Big 12 and really leading the nation in field goal percentage at 78%. You get those high percentage looks. All of his shots are right around the basket and in the paint. Kansas back within nine. Now this is about getting stops. Kanate off the mark. Azubuki's got the rebound. Well, that was a solid job. Azubuki just made Kanate shoot over and make him take a tough two over you. Good help by Issa Ahmad. Mikhailu with the left hand challenged by West. And it looks like that foul might be on Azabuki. That's his fourth. And that's excellent defense. First, the excellent help by Issa Ahmad and then Lamont West. Not giving up on the play to block that shot. Well, you talk about great team defense. And Ahmad made it impossible for Kansas to get the ball in to Yudoka Azubuki. And then on the drive, West just made a, a great block on Svi Mikhailu. There's the UCLA cut. Now the back pick. Carter finds Miles. Gives it up to Kanata. You could see that one coming. All that was made, uh, that was made by the cut by Daxter Miles. He didn't just stand on the penetration waiting for the ball. He cut to the basket. That was a fantastic scoring cut by Daxter Miles. Garrett, yes. Nice drive by the freshman, Marcus Garrett. You can't say enough about having an experienced backcourt like Javon Carter and Daxter Miles. Those guys have what, played over 100 games together? Yeah, they are the most experienced backcourt in the country. They've combined for 241 games played between the two. And that, that's, you're, you're playing against men. They, they are men out there. And that's a separating factor to have guards with that experience level. It's kind of like last year, Kansas, with Graham and Frank Mason. Graham can't hit the three. West from the corner. A little long. Back tap to Miles. Lightfoot couldn't keep two guys off the off the offensive glass. Ahmad doesn't get the roll. Battle inside. It looks like Lamont West will be called for a foul. That'll be the fifth on West Virginia, but that cut, Jay, and the trickle-down effect, you talked about it. Well, the great cut by Daxter Miles off the penetration by Javon Carter. That forced help, and that gave Kanate the chance to rip the rim down. Kanate above the rim on both ends. We are back with our Capital One fan vote. Who should be the number one team in college basketball? We've got four choices up on the poll. Why not the top four? Villanova, Virginia, Purdue, or Oklahoma. You can go to Facebook.com slash SportsCenter and vote. I'll give Jay Billis the first vote on Big Monday, at least on our show. I think Villanova should be number one right now. You know, Villanova, is uh, their starting five is as good as anybody. And Jalen Brunson is a player 
who should probably be talked about more as in the National Player of the Year conversation. I mean, I know Oklahoma's Trey Young and Duke's Marvin Bagley, the third, have taken all the air out of everything. Great slip of the ball screen. That was a design play out of the timeout. Mitch Lightfoot slipping that screen, getting all the way to the basket. Kansas just down seven. And remarkable that they're within striking distance. Can West Virginia get something going to the basket? Canate against Lightfoot. Muscles it up and in. He didn't go over Mitch Lightfoot. He went through him. Newman goes at Canate. Can't lay it in. I was surprised he didn't go to the other side of the rim to try to protect the ball against Canate blocking the shot. Or use a shot fake. Steal by Vic. Throws it across the court, and it's tracked down by Malik Newman. I think Kansas can start getting the ball from side to side right now because really West Virginia not out in passing lanes like they were a little bit earlier in the game. Newman from the corner. In and out for three. Oh, that looked like it was down. Well, you're not going to get a better shot. Really nice job by Devontae Graham to drag the defense off that ball screen. Vic saves it as Wesley Harris had no idea that pass was coming. Devontae Graham forces one up. Wild shot won't go. But a foul is called. That will put Devontae Graham at the free throw line. Devontae Graham is the only Jayhawk that's been to the free throw line thus far in the game. He's one of two in the first half. But those are the only free throws that Kansas has shot in this game. Bob Huggins thought that Gerald Vick had his foot out of bounds when he saved that ball. That's the third on Carter. So now Javon Carter and Sag Kanate. Each have three fouls for West Virginia. And Azabuki, of course, has four. He's the most significant foul trouble for KU, and he's on the bench. Eighty-eight percent free throw shooter, third best in the Big 12, but only one of two. Kansas right now wants to continue to make West Virginia prove it over the top. Canate's jumper won't go. Issa Ahmad an offensive rebound. And a foul, I believe, on Devontae Graham. And that's the difficulty when a shot goes up. Even Canate stepping away from the basket. Look how small Kansas is. Well, they're going against an excellent offensive rebounding team, especially with Ahmad on the floor. And every time a shot goes up, West Virginia does a great job of getting two rebounders on the weak side. And that's one of the that's one of the reasons they're one of the one of the excellent offensive rebounding teams in the country. Well, Issa Ahmad back on the court after that academic suspension in the first semester. I did check with him on his grades. He's very proud of himself. He just fell short of the honor roll this semester. Said he did a really good job, got a lot of B pluses, really focused himself academically because he did not want to miss time on the court and uh, way to rebound after that disappointment early in the semester. Well, a message received then. Now, West sorry, Virginia is now 11 for 11 at the line. I was sorry to report that you might not be doing this game because of your academic performance, I've heard. Yeah, my GPA is right at the Mendoza line. <laughs> it's not good. Good pass. Lightfoot. Can't make it count. And here comes Azabuki back to the scorer's table. So Carter with a floater. That's good. Bill Self wants a timeout. He wants to get Yudoka Azabuki back in the game. Under nine minutes to go. Back to double digits, the lead for West Virginia. Fans, the men's basketball. With the modern day parody of college basketball, it's amazing that Kansas has won the Big 12 13 consecutive years, tying the all time record with UCLA. Is this the year that one of these other teams, like an Oklahoma, 
like a Texas Tech, like a West Virginia. Wins the Big 12 and outlasts Kansas. And West Virginia, Jay Billis, they can hold on and win this game tonight. That's a step in the right direction as these two teams a couple of weeks from now are going to meet again, or about a month from now, meet at Allen Fieldhouse as well. Yeah, it's a step, it's a step toward a Big 12 championship to win this game for West Virginia, but you have to protect your home court. I mean, really, the issue is, can you get road games? And, you know, heck, West Virginia's won this game the last four years against Kansas in this building. But really, the, I think the feeling is, if you can't get Kansas this year, when are you going to get them? I mean, they're, they're, they're smaller in the front court. They're, they're very thin depth-wise in the front court. This is not one of Bill Self's best teams, but still, it's a difficult team to beat. Here's the double team off the post pass. And a steal by Mikhailu, but he passed it to himself. Lost right. the ball and is called for a travel. Well, that's an unforced turnover, and when Kansas has had an opportunity to string a couple scores together to try to establish some rhythm, they're not able to do it. That's the first turnover of the second half for Kansas, so Kansas has done a much better job taking care of the ball. Bolden can't hit. Mikhailuk rips it away from Ahmad. Oh, what a great rebound. Knocked out of bounds. And they'll say it's off Mikhailuk. He just lost it. Mikhailuk going against two guys. There are those two weak side rebounders for West Virginia. And the referee right on top of it said that it went out off of Steve Mikhailuk. Now, one of the reasons I think that West Virginia struggled a little bit offensively as Teddy Allen hasn't played one minute in this game. What a play by Graham. Chance for a three-point play for Devontae Graham at Grandma. That's worth the drive. The fourth foul on Javon Carter as well. Could that be a momentum swinging play as we head to the last eight minutes of a sonic blockbuster on Big Monday? Devontae Graham shoots the bonus when we come back. Javon Carter just picked up his fourth foul. Bob Oshusen here with Jay Billis and Holly Rowe. And there is the freshman, Teddy Allen, who has scored over 20 points three times this season, seven times in double figures, and has yet to play tonight. And had a great game. He had 20 points against Oklahoma, put up 22 against Kansas State. And not a great shooter, but a, a, a hot scorer that can really go off the bounce, good offensive rebounder, uses his body really well. And a little surprising that we haven't seen him at all in this game because he could add a little bit of scoring punch for West Virginia. But what a big play, Bob, by Devontae Graham to get that steal, pick up the fourth foul on Carter. This could be a momentum-changing play for Kansas after those two turnovers and being down 10. What's the trickle-down effect with a Carter on the bench for West Virginia defensively? Well, you lose, well, he lose arguably the best perimeter defender in the country. As Kanate hits a jumper. Well, that's a nice answer from Sagaba Kanate. That's well, funny, he doesn't score most of his baskets around the rim. He makes shots like that. Vic, short. Well, Kansas has had some open shots, they just rushed them. West lost it out of bounds. Well, you talked about could this be momentum changing. I'll tell you the huddle for Kansas was different. Devontae Graham finally got loud, got big, was showing some leadership in that huddle. Bill Self said, look, this is a three or four possession game, guys. We are right in this thing. Their goal at the under four minute mark was to be down by only three or four points. And he said, you know, when Kansas, one of the assistants piped in and said, when uh, West Virginia gets in close games down the stretch, their shot selection is not always the best. Let's go get this. They think they can still win this game. And Devontae Graham's never come off the floor. Why would you take him out? Well, you'd think at some point how you get worn down by West Virginia might be compelled to put him on the bench, but maybe Carter, with four fouls being on the bench, gives him a little bit of breathing room now while he's playing. McConnell from the corner. That's a three. And KU is down by six. And how many times have we seen Kansas shoot from the spot they catch it? And West Virginia, under Bob Huggins, forever has always wanted to take away catch and shoot. Don't let them shoot it from the catch spot. And that's exactly what Kansas is doing in this second half. Miles with eight to shoot. 
West straight away. Rainbow three. No good. Azabuki playing with four fouls. Has the rebound. West Virginia continues to settle for jump shots. This is a huge possession right here for Kansas. Graham attacks. Off his thigh. Out of bounds. That time, Devontae Graham attacks without a pass being made, but when the balls moves from side to side, that terrific pass by LeGerald Vick, and Svi Mikhailuk was able to set those feet and knock it down. There's that little flex cut, and Kansas switching it. Ahmad steps back. Rolls home along two, I believe. Bob Huggins thinks it's a three, and Joe DeRosa signaled to the scorer's table that that's one they're going to take a look at to see if it's a two or a three. I think they've got it as a two right now. Here's Mikhailu. Why yes! Did, why do they keep coming off of him in the corner? I mean, you cannot let him set his feet in the corner. I mean, Lamont West keeps coming off him. That's really hard to imagine. Ahmad can't answer. Foul called. It's going to go against West Virginia. That's Kanate. That's his fourth. Issa Ahmad's shot. Was it a two or a three? And that looks like a three. Good thing he doesn't wear one shoe size bigger. <laughs> So now both teams out of Malik fouls Newman. to give. Malik Newman will shoot a one and one. You can see KU also has 16 fouls. So we'll shoot free throws the rest of the way. And Kanate forced to sit down. So now the two most effective players, Jay, tonight for West Virginia. Kanate and Carter both on the bench with four fouls. For how long is the question? Well, not much longer. He's a senior. He can play with fouls. But right now, you know, from West Virginia's perspective, West Virginia's defense has been really good. Have they made a couple of defensive mistakes in the second half? Absolutely. Coming off Svima Kailuk in the corner, yes. But really, this, this comeback, you have to give credit to Kansas for their toughness. But West Virginia's offense has not been good in this second half. Ahmad has it stripped away. Great play by Graham. Good pass. Graham for the tie. Yes! KU has come all the way back. That's why you win 13 Big 12 titles in a row. This is the fight right now of a champion. And Bob Huggins wants a timeout. Look at the Kansas bench. And look at West Virginia as they walk back to the bench. That was not a confident walk back to the bench. What a turnaround. And you know what? It came from that steal from Devontae Graham with just under eight minutes to go. When it was 55-45, it was Graham picked the pocket of Devontae Graham and took it the other end for the three-point play. What a gigantic play that was in the momentum of this game. And a terrific pass by LeGerald Vick. And right now, Kansas has the Mo in Morgantown. The last time we saw a big comeback between Kansas and West Virginia, it was at Allen Fieldhouse, and it was late as Kansas trailed by 14 with less than three minutes to go. There were folks leaving the fog, and they came back and saw Kansas come back and a win eventually in overtime. Now, if you want to win the Big 12 championship, you have to answer right here. Now, that was not a confident-looking West Virginia team going back into the huddle. Let's see how they come out of the huddle. Turnover. Not strong looks on, on the faces of West Virginia right now. It's a little bit surprising given the experience of this team.
Here comes Vic. Lobs one. Azabuski had it go over his head. A foul call, though, on Machi Bender. That'll put Azabuki at the line. All in all, not a horrible result for West Virginia. Azabuki, not a very good free throw shooter. And Bender taking away what was a sure two with the foul. Zabuki can't hit the three. Now remember, that Issa Ahmad three that was ruled a two hasn't been officially looked at by the referees. So West Virginia, for all intent and purposes right now, has a one-point lead. They're probably going to get another point on the board when they go to the monitor at the under-four timeout. Miles scoops. Can't score it. Bender has it stripped away. Makai Luke's tied up, and it looks like a foul will be called on Lamont West. So Speed Makai Luke will shoot free throws when we come back to try and give Kansas the lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. Bob Wachusen, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, Big Monday. I think that guy was responsible for the replay review while we were away. But they did officially look at the Issa Ahmad shot that had been ruled a two on the floor. They changed it to a three, and correctly so. So it is a one-point lead for West Virginia. But, Jay, catch and shoot has been a big part of the Jayhawks' attack West, in the second half. West Virginia wants to take away any shot from the catch spot. They do not want to allow Kansas catch and shoot opportunities. But in the second half, the threes that Kansas has hit have all been from catches with your feet set. Don't have to put the ball on the deck. Don't have to take a pull-up jump shot. Svi Mikhailu had a couple from the left corner. Devontae Graham from the right. And that's been the difference in Kansas getting back into this. But Devontae Graham with that steal, that was the momentum play that turned this game back in Kansas's favor. And Jay, you're right, that's a senior making a play for Kansas. Well, Bob Huggins in that last huddle just challenged his seniors. He yelled at Javon Carter and Daxter Miles, telling them, hey, I'm out of ideas right now. If you guys, if my seniors aren't going to step up and start making plays, Daxter Miles has been very quiet, guys, lately, just seven points. The seniors got to take this if they want it. Well, there's Carter trying to give West Virginia the lead back. They have lost it for the first time since Kansas led 9-7. West Virginia's offense throughout the game. I, I think I mentioned it. I thought they'd been settling for jump shots most of the game. The ball fake and the finish by Graham. And no Kanate at the rim to wipe it away or challenge it. And here he comes to the scorer's table. So Carter back in the game with four, and Bob Huggins sends Kanate to check in at the next whistle. Boy, what a turnaround in this ball game. This has been that you can tell why Kansas has won so many titles. Issa Ahmad cuts the lead down to one. That broke a 12 0 Kansas run. And right now, with four fouls, Javon Carter can't afford to be on Devontae Graham. Graham bounces one to no man's land. Azabuki on the deck. Down goes Mikhailu, tied up with Ahmad. Held ball. It belongs to West Virginia. That's a costly turnover for Kansas. Just a weak pass trying to get it through the double team by Devontae Graham. A rare turnover and mistake. A great effort by Issa Ahmad and Svi Mikhailu to get down on the deck. Kansas had nine turnovers in the first half, only four in the second half. Well, you might be able to, as a coach to fault some decision-making on the part of your players, but you can't fault the effort. Kansas really packing it in. 
Good help by Azabuki. Seven to shoot. Carter. Jump stop. Fade away. Yes. Come on, Carter. Makai Luke, the finger roll, puts KU back on top. Boy, what a play after the high ball screen going to the two side of the floor to get a two-man game, and Makai Luke just attacked. Carter at Azabuki, no foul call. Here comes Makai Luke, he is fouled. Wesley Harris will put Makai Luke back at the line to shoot two. Now, Bob Huggins wants a foul on that play because Azubuki he doesn't think he kept his arm straight up. But that was, that last play by Kansas was a called play by Bill Self. He calls it I. High ball screen and then they throw it back for a little two-man game and Mikhailuk just ripped and, and took it to the rim. That was a great drive by a guy who's an outstanding perimeter shooter. 16 now for Mikhailuk. And Mikhailuk in Big 12 play has really shot the ball incredibly well. Coming into this game, he was 22 of 41 in his last five games from three-point range. Four threes a game during that period. Spee's got 12 points in the last six minutes, and Kansas has a three-point lead. Well, if you can get a win like this on the road, Bob, that's like winning two at home. And this would be an incredible theft on the part of Kansas given the way the game went the first 30 minutes. Carter for the tie. In and out. Lamont West has it. Those two rebounders on the weak side really paying dividends. Carter tries again. That's short. Way up in the air, Ahmad. And a foul will be called against Kansas. That's a one and one. And Azabuki is fouled out. They get Azabuki for his fifth. Here's the difference that Issa Ahmad can make on the offensive glass. Coming in, nobody's able to lay a body on him. Tough call for Azubuki. That didn't look like a foul, just looked like rebounding. Coming up after the game at Sports Center with Bucci and Levy, they'll have everything you need to know about that Warriors Cavs showdown, an historic day in the NBA. We might have a new three point king. And the Vikings' quest to host the Super Bowl continues in the NFC title game. All that and more. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done here in Morgantown on ESPN and the ESPN app. That Viking Saints game, that may have been the greatest backdoor cover in the history of the NFL. <laughs> How oh. about the putback? Dexter Miles off the miss. One point game, under a minute to go. Well, there's the senior stepping up. What a game. Well, Gerald Vick drives it. Can't finish. That's got to be goaltending. They and it is on the putback by Mitch Lightfoot. Terrific play by Lightfoot, who has got great bounce. And it looked like it was Kanate went through the rim here. Yeah, no doubt about it. Like two really big plays in a row on the offensive glass. First on the missed free throw by Daxter Miles, getting past with Gerald Vick, and then Mitch Lightfoot. Bob Huggins wants a timeout. Timeout. Right now, West Virginia does not need to have, they don't have to have a three. But they want to get something going toward the basket. Is this all Javon Carter? I'd put the ball in his hands and let him make a play, absolutely. But this is, a, this is a team that does a really good job cutting. They haven't done a good job in this game. This hasn't been an offensive clinic for West Virginia. They're a better offensive team than they've shown. But, yep, I can't get over the heart that Kansas has shown I was going to ask you, if we went back to when 
We were about three or four minutes into the second half, continuing to lead by double digits, West Virginia. Did you ever imagine we'd be at this point? No, they looked, in a way, look, I don't want to say dead and buried, but they, they looked like this was going to give me a 10-point game. But the, the, the play that Devontae Graham made with just under eight minutes to go where he took the ball away from Javon Carter and took it the other way for a three-point play to cut it to seven, that was the play that changed this game. Devontae Graham in the second half on this play put Kansas in a position to win the game and totally changed the momentum and gave his team that spark that led them to take the lead in this ball game and be right now with a, a, a one possession lead up three. Here we go down to 30 seconds to go. And again, don't have to have a three. I'd want something going to the rim. Carter tries a three. Long rebound. Run down by Newman. Shot clock is off. West Virginia has to foul. And Newman dribbles a lot of time off the clock. Down under 14 seconds before they finally track him down. And Lamont West commits his third. Well, settling for that three, and Javon Carter's a great player. But that was not a good shot. It was a challenge three. Why not take it into the lane and try to get a foul? And then if it collapses the defense and you can kick it out to a three-point shooter stepping into his shot, that's a completely different deal. That was a big miss by Newman. Makes this a crucial free throw, and now it's a four-point lead. Two-possession game, so right now Kansas wants to slow the advance as best they can. Miles for three. That's an air ball. Newman's got it. What a win for Kansas. What he is fouled win. with three seconds to go, but Kansas is going to steal one here in Morgantown. And Bill Self has a gigantic smile on his face because he knows it. Devontae Graham turned this game around. Well, tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Phillips 66. And the biggest momentum-changing, game-changing play was made by number four. Thank you, Grandma. That one was for you. Talk about worth the ride. Kansas comes from 55-43 down with under nine minutes to go to take it by five and break a four-game losing streak to West Virginia here in Morgantown. Stunning. A stunning win by Kansas, who've lost four in a row in this building. Devontae Graham with the, the momentum-changing play. What a winner. What a champion. John Bucci Gross, Steve Levy are standing by with Sports Center and stay with us. Stay with Sports Center because we're going to come right back to the WVU Coliseum with more. What a win for Kansas for Jay Billis and Holly Rowe. I'm Bob Wachusen. So long for the moment. Let's get Sports Center started.